in the spirit of New Year, I'll do a top 12 things to do to save, or, well, reduce your cost of living if going to the Philippines. First one is ballot buying boxes. I know a lot of people say, well, I don't use them, don't need it. There is always something from the West that would actually justify sending the stuff ahead. But also, you can sell on the stuff that you don't actually uh, use yourself. This is what I was saying about things like the uh, soaps and stuff. Pear soap, for example. The quality in the West is far superior to what people are getting in Asia, which is why they're quite willing to even buy it off you. Um, I normally do Asda. Um, the old buy one get one th free or the three for two or whatever um, and you can get some good bargains and it's not like I say a lot of the stuff we don't even keep ourselves we end up selling it on but we do keep a big uh, bin about probably about four foot high full of all the stuff all the dried food and stuff that we use over a year um, things like curry sauces and things which um, aren't so perishable but they're fantastic for meals and things so there is stuff that a you can get into the country via ballot buying box but b if you're buying them locally they're generally expensive number two the further away you live from the city the cheaper the rents normally get but also it does seem that electric and other bills get cheaper as well it must be to in relation to um, the local market value but if you're like, say, Cebu City, you'll find your rates are more expensive than mine in Mingonilia, even though I'm only a bus ride away. Um, so take that into account because you can actually save yourself a few thousand pesos by renting a bit further away. Don't use fixers at immigration. Immigration is one of those places you're going to have to go to more than once and... To be honest with you, once you know the system, you don't have to pay anybody. But also, you connect with the people in there, so you can sometimes be in and out quite quickly. And either way, it will save you money, but then you could even help process other people's paperwork if they want the assistance, and you could get them to pay for your travel or whatever. Um, I'm not telling you how to do it, but at the end of the day, if you wanted to say, right, well, I'll do yours, but it's going to cost you 400 pesos because I've got to go into the city to do it, even though you're doing your own at the same time, um, that's up to you. It's as simple as that. But moving away from fixes for everything, you will save money, without a doubt. Number four, transportation. If you're using taxis on a regular basis, they do eat away your money quite quickly. Um, I know the route from our place to SML, for example, is about 250, 300 pesos a run, um, which is basically the, it's actually more than it cost me in my motorcycle fuel. But at the same time, if we went by bus, um, it's only about 30 pesos a person each way. So, You've got to decide, if you're there long term, ad adapt to the buses, um, it will save you money. But then you can, on rainy days, you can still hop in a taxi now and again. It's up to you, but personally, I find the, the buses are okay, just generally don't use them after dark uh, for safety reasons. Very, very rarely do I hear anybody being robbed during the day. Or I mean, pickpockets are still active 24-7, but the actual hold-ups, I don't hear many of the, those happening during the daytime. Number five, get a motorbike. Motorbikes is probably one of the most used transport pieces of transportation used by expats, uh, especially provincial, um, where roads can be a bit difficult to pass in bad weather. Um, you will find it will save you a lot of money, because even if you use public transport, Getting things like um, the daily shop or stuff is a trek backwards and forwards on a regular basis. In the same way, if you just need to pop into the city just to grab something, the bus routes don't run straight to where you want to go. So you may end up taking four buses to get to where you need to get. So I reckon having a motorbike. Um, also, it's, it gives a bit more freedom because... Uh, 
you don't want to limit yourself just to the main roads, which can happen um, if you're if you're not as mobile. So yeah, I reckon having a, recommend having a motorbike. Number six, one I've mentioned many a time, live without aircon. Once you adapt to it, it's not too bad. But also, you'll find in the hot summer months, um, you it the dry season, you may actually use it more than you would like, um, cost wise. So if you don't use it through the wet season, then you could actually have more budget. Personally, I recommend getting used to fans. Fans work just as well if they if they're the right type. I wouldn't use the oscillating ceiling fans. I find they're not very good because they're pushing down hot air the wall fans work quite well and the floor standing ones work well because you move them around where you are um, what does a fan cost? I found that the fans running most of the time cost about 300 pesos a month um, air conditioning unit doing about the same up to a maximum of three quarter of a horsepower would cost about one and a half to two thousand pesos so it's a huge difference between a fan and air conditioning. Number seven, don't have kids. <laughs> no, serious side here. I'm not joking. My biggest expense is children, um, medical vaccines, etc. You can't get free vaccines and stuff in the Philippines, but I do everything private. Uh, it's just the way I am. Um, so, education's expensive. Medication's expensive. Keeping them healthy is expensive because kids seem to get ill a lot more, especially nearer the cities, because of the pollution, the smog, the burning of rubbish, etc. They become prone to illness. Um, also, you've got the mosquitoes everywhere and stuff. So kids are a big expense. I mean, just for the education of my kids in Cebu uh, would be more than a lot of people's rent. Just to just to put it in perspective, so kids are very expensive um, if you want to look after them properly. Um, yes, you could send them to a free school, you know, one of the state schools. Yes, you can uh, get all the free vaccines and everything else. But then, the day, what future are you giving the kids long term? Because they come out of that uh, government school, and the paperwork is worth what? That's all I'm saying. Number eight, don't eat out. I don't say stop eating out, but you'll find that eats through quite a large bit of your budget. If you sit down, just keep the receipts from your meals. And then you'll look at it, say at the end of the month or the start of the next month, and you'll see how much you actually spend on takeouts. It's a lot more than you realize because it's very easy just to go, let's just go and grab a burger. Oh, let's go out tonight. What? Because I know ours, um, eating out, our bill could be as much as 20,000 pesos in a month. Um, now, I'm not expecting everyone else to be pay, going out and spending that sort of money, but you will find that you're probably spending more on your eating out than you are on groceries. Number nine, rent somewhere short term first. Do not commit to a six months, a one year rent or whatever. You need to move in somewhere and get an idea of what's going on in that neighbourhood. Are you going to get motorbikes at 6 o'clock in the morning? Are you going to get the roosters at 5? Are you going to get the video key every Saturday uh, from the local bar you didn't even know existed because there's a shack when you turned up to have a look at the property that's actually behind your house? Is there anything in the neighbourhood that's going to become a problem? Uh, for example, maybe there's a quarry somewhere so you've got heavy traffic on a regular basis. All these things you may not see when you first look at a property. So if you take it on an initial rent and just say, look, I'm willing to take a rent, but I want to try it first. Um, if I'm happy here, I'll, I'll rent it for six months or whatever. And then do it that way. When you've got the... Um, when you, you're negotiating for the properties, you will find you are the person... The, the property markets in the Philippines are not a um, seller's market as such or a landlord market. There is more people looking, uh, more properties than there is people looking for them. So the ball's in your court. You can reduce the cost. First thing I do, and here's a bit of advice for you, is 
never take the first prize. Being a foreigner, they've already hiked it up without a fail. Um, just say, okay, I'll have a think about it. I've got some more to look at, even if you're happy with it, and take the telephone number. Um, they, they, they might even ask you, say, well, I'm, I'm going to have a look at some other ones first, but have you got a telephone number? And then text your number, and you'll find they'll start and negotiate with you most of the time. Or you could go, go, oh, well, I liked it, but the rent's too much, etc. And you can knock the price down very easily to do. Um, knowing what the market rates are, as a foreigner, you might struggle to do that. That's why I don't say bother with that. But just assume they've stuck another 2000 a month on or whatever, and you can push that down. Um, it's always negotiable. It's the Philippines. Number 10, park, pack for essentials, not for what you would like. For example, spend more money on some good razors so you've got enough for six months rather than buying a new iPhone. You, this will make sense in a minute why, why I say essentials. Invest in a good waterproof jacket that will fold up and be very small that you can keep on you most of the time. You know, you, you keep it in your bag. So that if you do get caught in the Philippines rain, you've got a waterproof jacket to get you out of trouble. You want a breathable one, I'll tell you that now, because you'll sweat more. It'll be wetter on the inside, otherwise <laughs> I'll tell you now. I've had a cheap waterproof before. I, I, I ended up riding in the rain um, because it was actually more comfortable than all the sweat inside this jacket. But the, the reason being is this is where the cost saving comes from. If you don't and you get sick because you haven't got a jacket with you, that will cost you a lot more than it would have done to get the jacket in the first place. That's why I say pack for essentials, not with what you like. You know, new iPhone, new camera, blah, blah, blah. If your camera works fine, you don't need to replace it. It's nice to replace it, but you may have essential items that you should invest in first. Hiking boots, for example, they're fantastic for walking through the big puddles and stuff with the sewers are overflowing and stuff in the Philippines because you will get infections between your toes. You'll get all these um, athletes' foot and stuff like that because there's stuff coming up through the sewers. So be aware, essentials are much more important. They'll keep you healthy for a start. Number 11, every time you go out, you don't have to pay. Um, you need to split that off and not get uh, caught into this because if a foreigner says, oh, let's, let's go out for a meal, they assume the foreigner's paying a lot of the time. Just say, well, I'm going out for a meal, you know, I'm taking whoever you're with, and it's up to them if they want to go or not. Let them invite themselves, but do not pay for them. Just say, I'm not paying for this, you know, I'm just paying for me and whoever. Because uh, you can end up with some quite big bills otherwise on a regular basis until you get fed up with it, and then you start this big argument. And that's where you end up with problems. Uh, just don't get roped into it. It's as simple as that. Now, in Philippine culture, it's very normal. The reason being, it's not because of the foreigner, it's because of the OFW. When the overseas worker returns to the Philippines, they generally take everybody out on a regular basis because they've been away from home for so long. That is culturally normal. But they are not your family. You're not married yet. You're not settled yet or whatever. And if you're there long term, you, you've no reason to be doing it at all. Because at the end of the day, you're not a new arrival coming back after being away for five years. You're a new person in the neighborhood. So as such, they're only your neighbors. So don't get roped into it. Pay for your own stuff and whatever. I don't, you know... Um, I can't remember who was talking about it before because they got roped into it with their, their wife's brother because he turned up drunk at the table and then started ordering stuff and and then uh, they went to go away and they're like, oh, he hasn't got any money for his food. It's like, not my problem. You know, he, he expected me to pay. You can forget it. I'm not paying it certainly for that reason um, because they didn't, even assume, they didn't even ask. They just assumed that you're going to carry them. Don't get roped into it. Number 12, don't invest too much in the people you meet first time round. And I say, you know, go out for meals, stuff like that. I'm talking about jewelry. I'm talking about buying something for the family, you know, uh, a new motorbike or something. Don't get roped into this stuff. You're not married yet. These problems were there before you arrived. They'll be there when you're not there anymore. 
they were not yours to fix. And on uh, on top of that, a lot of these time, a lot of these are self inflicted problems. I've mentioned before about the motorbike where the guy didn't even bother changing the oil. Given a brand new motorcycle to do habble habble, where basically they ride you as a back passenger and they take money. It's, it's a motorbike taxi basically, and the guy complained to the foreigner that the bike was broke because it was the foreigner's fault for not getting it serviced and having the oil changed, etc., when it ran out of oil because it, it basically knackered the engine. That is a mentality with some people. These people are not your problem. Do not get roped into it. You're not even married yet. You're not in a relationship yet. You are courting. You're going through the, the same process a Filipino would with meeting somebody, getting to know them, and you know, traveling around a bit. You're there to experience the Philippines. And that's the way you should look at it. Not there to go hunting a wife as if you're there with a spear or something. You're there to experience the Philippines. If you meet the right person, you meet the right person. If you don't, you've had a fantastic holiday. And you can come back again. Because at the end of the day, you should come back with a right uh, upbeat attitude of why you love the Philippines and why you want to come back again. A lot of the stuff on the surface, a lot of people don't get until they've actually been there. Because, you know, the poverty and everything would put a lot of people off. But there's a lot of positive stuff in there which outweighs all the negativity. But at the end of the day, these people are not your responsibility. Unless you decide to do it at some point. But not on your first trip. You know, you know if you decide to help a brother-in-law, get married first. <laughs> Before that... Don't bother. I mean, it's just not your problem. Yeah.